Ray, welcome back to the third and final video in the death state of our game. I didn't realize when I was writing all this out that it would take up this much, but uh, there is quite a bit involved in it just to get it set up. We are going to create our very first function of this game. There are going to be several before we're done. So I am going to go to event sheets and I'm going to right click and add event sheet. And I'm going to rename this uh, in all lowercase functions. So let's go ahead and right click. And with the fairly recent updates to the functions, we now are able to just add a function straight from our drop down menu. We no longer have to add it as an object type. It is completely built in. And once I figured out how it works differently from uh, the old version, this is actually really, uh, really smart move on the Construct 3 game engines part. It is super easy once you understand how functions work and they end up being incredibly useful. And well, we're about to find out. So let's add a function and we're going to call this uh, player death. And I'm going to leave all the descriptions empty. I'm going to show you uh, how I got to this function in the first place. This is a screenshot of an older version that I had going. And this is what the, the death function originally looked like. And what's happening here is when the function is called, we create the object player death that we created in the last video. And then we set the image point in which that object is created. So if you remember, image point one was the head. And then we set the animation frame to what body part that is, which would have been zero. The zero frame is the head. Then we applied the physics impulse at uh, a random direction. All that is to create the head and apply the force. Then I copied it and I did the same thing, except when I created the second one, I created it at image point two, which would have been the chest. And then I set the animation frame to one, which would be the chest, and then applied the physics. And I did that six times to create all six body parts and set all six animation frames and ap applied physics, the exact same force and direction of physics, six times. That's a lot of repetition that we don't need. I came back to it a little later and simplified it. And we are going to use a loop. Let's go ahead and add a group. And let's call this uh, function player death. I know it's a bit of a long title, but we don't want to get it confused with uh, player death over here on controls. So in our functions sheet, let's go ahead and take this function that we've created, slide it into that new group, to get all of that done, we are going to create a loop. And an, a loop has to be a triggered event, so we can't add it in the action. We actually have to add a sub-event to our called function. Uh, right click on the function, say add sub-event. And then we want to pick system, and I'm going to type in four we want the for loop, repeat actions with an index variable. So let's select for, and it's going to give us some options here. I'm actually going to give this a name. You don't have to in some cases, but we are going to need to reference it more than once. So in between the quotation marks, I'm just going to type a lowercase i, and that stands for iterations. And then our start index, I'm going to start, uh, I'm gonna go one through six because we have six body parts that we want to create. So we're going to loop starting at one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's hit done. And then it reads up here for I from one to six. That means we're going to loop from one through six. So what do we want to do each time that it loops? We want it to create 
So go to System, uh, Create Object, and let's pick our Player Death. And we want to put that on Layer Player. And our X and Y coordinates are going to read off of our loop information. So I want to put this at an image point. We're creating, let's just say this is the first time through the loop. We're going to create the head and we're going to create it at the player object's first image point, which was uh, image point one, if you remember, we set for the head. So I'm going to type in player, grab that player object, dot, and then I want to get the image point and we're on the X value, so image point X, and then we put which image point in parentheses. I could type parentheses one, and that would create it at the first image point, image point one. However, we're in a loop, and if I left it at that, it would create all six parts at the same image point, but I want it to create it at the different image points we assigned. We're going to use this uh, I that we created to name the loop. And what that means is that I is going to represent which number of loop it is on. So it's going to loop six times. And each time it loops, the value of I is going to change to the next value. So the first time, I is going to equal one. Second time, I is going to equal two. And so on until it gets to six, I will equal six. And then it'll be done. Let's go back to our image point here and erase the one, and in between those parentheses, I'm going to put the lowercase i in between quotation marks, and that is going to read which image point each time it goes through the loop. So I'm going to do the same thing with y. I'll say player dot image point y, and then in parentheses, uh, quotation i quotation in parentheses. So I did it this way to try to explain why we're referencing the I. But what we really have to do is call a built-in expression. So I'm going to erase that. So we have player.imagePointX, and then I'm going to put in parentheses which image point I want it to read. And what I want it to read is that I, but I want it to know uh, which part of the I or where the I is at and we get that by calling the loop index. And I'll just start typing that out, and there it is, loop index. And for loop index, we have to put another parentheses and tell it which index we're looking for, which is the i. So in quotation marks, put our lowercase i in the parentheses for that, and then another in parentheses for the whole expression. Our x coordinate of where it is going to create our first part is going to be at the player's image point on the x-axis at the loop index of i. So if it is on the first loop, i is going to equal 1. That is going to be the loop index of i. If we are on the third loop, then the loop index of i is going to equal 3. And it's going to set that image point to the uh, number three image point, which would, I think, is the first arm. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay, so I'm going to hit done on that. This is going to loop six times, and it's going to create this object at all these different image points. We got to put it in our death state. So come over here to the controls event sheet, and under player death, I'm going to add an action and I'm going to go to functions and then come down here and our player death function is right there for us. So highlight that, insert it, and then I'm going to slide this up uh, underneath, uh, let's say before we spawn the particles. So let's play level one. And you see we uh, have not set up physics for our collisions, but you can see that when it calls the function, it creates that image point, or it creates that object at all those different image points. Okay, let's go over to our families. 
and I don't think we've created a family yet. We're going to create our first family. So down here, the folder that says families, we're going to right click, say add family, and I'm going to pick all of our collision boxes and I'm going to add them into the family. So this side of your family uh, dialog box here should have all four of our collisions there. And I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to rename it FAM underscore uh, collision. Collisions, plural. With the family collision selected, I'm going to go to Edit Family Behaviors, add a new behavior, scroll down, and give it physics. I'm going to add. And what this does is it gives all of our collisions physics. And because they don't have to have individual parameters, we can just group them in a family and give the family physics, then they inherit the behavior. We don't want our collision boxes to fall off the screen, so I'm going to check immovable. The rest of this can stay the same. For something with physics to interact with something else, Anything else it interacts with has to have physics as well. So let's go ahead and play that. All six of our parts uh, forming, they're just not set at the right animation frame. But we are getting there. Okay, so to recap, make sure that your family of collisions has physics and immovable is checked. The rest of this can stay the same get back to our function and let's add an action and we're going to set the animation frame. So let's go to our sprites, our objects, pick our player death and I want to set frame. And what I want to do is set the frame to a different frame each time it loops. So the value that changes each time it loops is the I. So we're going to use the I again. So the frame number that I want it to create is going to be the loop index. And that's going to be parentheses, quotation, I, quotation, parentheses. Here's where we run into an issue. I'm going to go ahead and hit done on that. But if you remember, we set this from 1 to 6. And that is because we can call image point 1 through 6, which is how we have it set up on our player object. Image point one is the head, image point two is the chest, and so on. So with the animation frame to use the eye, when we have our player death object, our animation frame starts at zero and goes to five. So for each loop, I want it to be one less than what the eye is reading. So we're just going to go back in here, and at the end of this, I'm going to hit minus one. One more thing to do in this function, and we are going to add an action. Let's go to our sprites, objects, player death, and scroll down to physics. Apply impulse. Uh, impulse at an angle. So apply impulse at angle. Uh, apply an impulse on the object as if it were suddenly struck at an angle. Sounds good to me. So the impulse is going to be a number that we are going to set in a local variable that I have not set up yet. So for now, let's just say uh, 5. And the angle is going to be a random angle. We're going to use the random expression. I'm going to call up my little, little chart here. And this is how angles work according to the Construct 3 game engine. So 0 is to the right, 90 is going down, 180 is to the left, and 270 is up. So when our player hits a spike and his body parts go flying, I want the impulse to go out in a direction upwards and outwards, but randomly. I want the engine to select it randomly. So I'm going to say, let's say from 240 to 300 is where we want it to randomly shoot out at. I'm going to say our angle is going to be, I'm going to type in the random expression. So just type in random. And then in parentheses, we're going to give it the values, which we said 240 
and then comma 300 in parentheses. Image point is going to be zero because we don't need to set up an image point for the impulse. Okay, let's hit done. Over on our controls, make sure we do still have that set up there. I think that should do it. Let's make sure that this loop works. Let's play. And look there, all six different body parts. And each time we, we hit that spike, it is applying a force in a random direction in between those two values we gave it. So that is our own little particle system that we created with a loop and a few expressions. And I am uh, quite pleased with how this has turned out. All right. Okay, I believe I'm going to go ahead and close our function player death group up. We are going to be adding many more functions before this project is over. Uh, we do have more to add, but uh, it, it will come in time when we add other elements to the game. So from here, uh, we are going to move into a few more functions. Uh, I believe the next video we will do the start level function, which is a way that we will be able to just call a function at the beginning of each level we play, no matter uh, what level it is. We can call this function every time and it will set the game up for us and we will create that in the next level. It's, it's another uh, detailed and involved function, but it will solve many problems on down the line. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one and make sure that you are saving often.